and you point out that um, the Office of Legal Counsel reviewed it uh, to determine whether, in its view, the proposed executive order was lawful on its face and properly drafted. Is it true that the Office of Legal Counsel did conclude that it was lawful on its face and properly drafted? Yes, they did. The Office and you of overruled them? I did. The and Office who, of Legal... Uh, what, what is your authority to... Uh, to overrule the Office of Legal Counsel when it comes to a legal determination? The Office of Legal Counsel has a narrow function, and that is to look at the face of an executive order and to determine purely on its face whether there is some set of circumstances under which at least some part of the executive order may be lawful. And importantly, they do not look beyond the face of the executive order. For example, it's statements that are made contemporaneously or prior to the execution of the EO that may bear on its intent and purpose. The, that office does not look at those factors. And in determining the constitutionality of this executive order, that was an important analysis to engage in and one that I did. Well, Ms. Yates, uh, I thought the Department of Justice had a longstanding tradition of defending a presidential action in court if there are reasonable arguments in its favor, regardless of whether those arguments might prove to be ultimately persuasive which, of course, is up to the courts to decide and not you, correct? It is correct that oftentimes, but not always, the civil division of the Department of Justice will defend an action of the president or an action of Congress if there is a reasonable argument to be made. But in this instance, all, all arguments have to be based on truth because we're the Department of Justice. We're not just a law firm. We're the Department of Justice. And Can in you this distinguish instance, the truth from lawful? Yes, because in this instance, in looking at what the intent was of the executive order, which was derived in part from an analysis of facts outside the face of the order, that, that is part of what led to our conclusion that it was not lawful, yes. Well, Ms. Yates, you had a distinguished career for 27 years of the Department yeah. of Justice, and I... Um, I voted for your confirmation because I believe that you had a distinguished career. But I have to tell you that I find it enormously disappointing that you somehow vetoed the decision of the Office of Legal Counsel with regard to the lawfulness of the president's order and decided instead that you would countermand the executive order of the president of the United States because you happen to disagree with it as a policy matter. Well, I it wasn't. To, uh, I just have to say that. I, I, I appreciate that, Senator. And let me make one thing clear. It was not purely as a policy matter. And in, in fact, I remember my confirmation hearing um, in an exchange that I had with you and, and others of your colleagues where you specifically asked me in, in that hearing that if the president asked me to do something that was unlawful or unconstitutional, and one of your colleagues said, or even just that would reflect poorly on the Department of Justice, would I say no? And I looked at this, I made a determination that I believed that it was unlawful. I also thought that it was inconsistent with the principles of the Department of Justice. And I said no, and that's what I promised you I would do, and that's what I did. I don't know how you can say that it was lawful and say that it was within your prerogative to refuse to defend no. it in a court of law and leave it for the court to decide. Senator, I did not say it was lawful. 